And so they snatched my butt off the set and I was like, wait, I rap tomorrow. They said, well, no, you don't, you rap now. We talk about Iman constantly because she was born to play Miss Marvel. Like she, not since Robert Downey Jr. has somebody been more perfectly cast in their role. Yes. Uh, but you're also a huge geek yourself. Like, <laughs> when you were pregnant, you had a like a cooking the next Avenger like yeah. T-shirt. It was super cute. What do you want to bring to the next generation of superheroes, like your daughter? Right now, in the MCU and in the superhero space, it has opened up so much to be more diverse and show superhero that superheroes can look like any of us, you know? And so I am so grateful for that. I am excited that my child, this whole generation of younger people and also adults, like I actually needed this sort of content as in college and as a as even now just to see people who look like you who don't look like you be in situations that are familiar but are also quite extraordinary yeah it's, it's gonna be really special the, that my child and the the younger generation will this will they will grow up with a default of having oh there's a black woman superhero there's a couple of them actually there's uh, Asian and all different types of ethnicity of superheroes and we get to celebrate and experience their worlds with them. So watching your joy as you get sewn into the photon suit for the first time is just such a wonderful thing to witness and you're so known for living in the moment and being thankful for like what you have. Thank you. But what do you want to see as like the next big milestone that Monica hits as a character in the MCU? Ooh, I would love to learn and what we've, we've learned about her history and who she is, but I would like to get to know her more intimately um, than we have been able to so far. That's a very broad thing to say, but it can show up in many different ways. So I wouldn't want to like pigeonhole how that happens. Yeah. But yeah, I think that would, I, I would like to see her more intimately. That doesn't mean it can't be in very grand, extraordinary situations. The Marvels is such an expression of joy, which for some reason, a lot of people took personally. <laughs> uh, um, how did you center yourself while all that hate was coming in? Mm. I can't say that I really felt the hate because we were in a very disconnected time. I, the strike was happening at that point. And so I was surrounded by people who were excited for me, people who wanted and were waiting to see me and these other women get up here and kick butt. So I felt a lot of love. You know, there's also grieving, not being able to celebrate all of the hard work that we did put into making the film, not only us, but the entire crew and creative team. And so there was that, I'm watching the flurkins and the cats on the red carpet, like some bull, but you know, um, I, it, I, I tried to be intentional with keeping my space sacred and, and joyful and positive and leaning into that more than whatever else might've been happening outside of my little bubble. <laughs> so you've developed such a great working relationship with Nia DaCosta, mm -hmm. uh, who is obviously a force and wildly talented. Yes. But what is it about her sets specifically that makes you want to continue coming back with her? I love Nia's mind and how it works. And, and she's also just very collaborative and open to ideas and also just really gives me and the artists the space to make their own choices. And she'll be like, hmm, in a different way, you know what I mean? So I, I I loved our working relationship. Like she trusts me, I trust her, and we were, we have been able to just make really cool projects and movies from that, uh, that are rooted in that trust. So representation often feels like it moves at such a glacial pace, <laughs> uh, but the life and joy that you bring to Monica and the grace that you have carried her with is such an important part of that progress. What advice do you have 
for maybe the next little black girl who dreams of being a part of the MCU? Maybe it's possible. <laughs> it is possible. And I pray that you come in and do things that I couldn't do and that you show us the world spaces and abilities and humanity and compassion and grace in ways that I couldn't do. And that we it just keeps carrying on and carrying forward. But baby, you can do it and you can do whatever else you want to do. It really is. It really is possible. I am truly sitting in a dream. Monica tells Carol that uh, in the last couple days, I have done a lot of things that I haven't done before. And this feels so connected to your journey in the MCU. Was there anything particular throughout this process or even on WandaVision where you looked at it and you were terrified, mm. but you did it anyway? I feel like the whole filmmaking of going to uh, London for the Marvels, um, it wasn't terrifying. I was excited, but because of the state of the world and with COVID and the restrictions around having the support system I normally would have with me, because um, you couldn't come in and out of the country, that became terrifying. And so having to work through that anxiety and the challenges that presented themselves on, presented themselves on set, um, that was a lot. It was honestly a lot. And the just the overwhelming and hanging feeling of I'm going to get COVID and the whole production is going to shut down because of me and it's all going to be my fault. Because I think at that point it was two week sit outs. You had to sit out for two weeks. And so, but I kept pushing. I was a bit of a hermit. And so that did not help my mental health because I was like, I'm not going to be the one to shut production down. I was in the house all of this. Meanwhile, everybody else is chilling, hanging out, having fun. I was like, not me. Um, not great for my mental health at all. But I got through it just for, you know, two days or the day before my last day to wrap for someone around me to have gotten COVID. And so they snatched me anyway. So I never actually wrapped. So I was like, what? You have got to be kidding me. Like 10 months or whatever, however long we were here. And the day before, <laughs> I didn't have, have COVID, but someone around me had it. And so they snatched my butt off the set. And I was like, wait, I rap tomorrow. They said, well, no, you don't. You rap now. You're going to sit here for two weeks while we rap and go home. Oh, was, that was devastating. That was because, again, you got to remember, we're peak COVID, like in it, the fears and things that were um, very present for all of us. Uh, so that was a bit devastating, but I, I kept up the shit, you know. Um, and yeah, I think, I mean, but that's that's just life. Like, yeah. I'm learning more and more that, you know, as I said, I'm sitting in a dream. And even within those dreams, devastations and trials and things can happen that you just, I feel like I've just tried to take it in and say okay you know this is life this is what it is it's it's about these things coming up and it's about how you deal with it did you and Bree and Amon like get to have like your own personal moment while there were cats on the on the red carpet um no we did not you know what um Nia went to a, a, a screening with Mary our producer and they FaceTimed us. And so it was me and Iman on that call. And so we got to see them go out and say, hi, you know, I, I think I was at a concert and Iman was in bed in Canada or something. So it was, it was what it was, <laughs> it was what it was. It's a fun story to talk about now. I want to finish up with just taking a moment to talk about your experiences with Brie and Iman because this is such a film about sisterhood and found family and those connections. Yeah. Uh, what was what was unique in your experience with those two on this film? Um, I think anytime you have an ensemble, there's you know there's different personalities, and so that can be the fun thing, and it can also be the thing where you're like <laughs> at the same time. But what was great about our trio, you know, Iman is this fresh, very specific to 
Well, in the comic books, she can tell us all about all of our characters um, and that energy and that just, just such a breath of fresh air. Um, then you have Brie who's done it for however many years. So she's the vet in this situation and the groundedness she brings to it. And then that's my energy in the group. Um, Nia says that I'm, and uh, they say I'm very, um, I want to talk about, well, what, are, what does this mean? How do we get to what we're trying to do? So I'm very analytical. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think I bring that part to it. And it, it just worked. It just worked. At, at least I hope it felt like that on screen. <laughs> it does. And there's there's actually a joke in the Blu-ray where it's Nia. She's talking to the camera oh. and she's like, <laughs> she is Monica. <laughs> She just wants to know what's going on and how it works and how to explain it. And how we get there. Like, how, how do we get there? Are we ready? No? Okay. Yeah. No, it's good. It was fun. It was a lot of fun.